Well, happy Monday, and welcome to Mondays with Michael Live here on Facebook. Uh, welcome, and I uh, hope you all had a great weekend. Uh, starts Thanksgiving week here, so hopefully all you are making plans for Turkey Day on Thursday. Uh, today's also a special day for us here at Training Solutions. Uh, it's Nikki's birthday today. She turns 25 today, so happy birthday, Nikki. I don't think you'll be watching this, but I just want to say happy birthday from Dad. So uh, thank you all for coming here today, and if those of you watching offline, thanks for, thanks for watching uh, after the session. Our session today is on behavior-based interviewing. Along with what we've talked about earlier this fall about making really, really good hiring decisions, we've talked about the PXT Select, uh, an assessment that uh, can help you do that, but we also want to talk a little about behavior-based interviewing because eventually, no matter what assessment tool you use, uh, you're going to have to either interview somebody on the phone or interview them face-to-face -face in your office to help you make a hiring decision. And uh, after you put out an ad in the paper or something online, you start getting all these resumes in. Once you've done your sort of resumes and you've gotten down to five, six, seven people that you want to interview, um, what does that process look like? How are you going to prepare yourself and how are you going to prepare the hiring managers in your organization to properly interview three, four, five, or six candidates? So I want to talk about that today. I'll have my, some of my notes I'm going to go over with you. As always, um, and if you have questions, pop them into the chat. And if you have questions after the session today, you can always email me here in Facebook or just send me an email, uh, Ferraro at trainingsolutions.com. So let's talk about a little about turnover. We've talked about turnover in the past, but uh, one of the reasons why organizations go down the road of behavior-based interviewing is you want to bring that turnover rate down. Uh, research tells us, SHRM tells us, in a lot of their research reports that uh, the turnover costs of uh, making a poor hiring decision is anywhere between 30 and 20 and 30 percent of the individual salary. So if you're paying somebody $50,000 a year, $60,000 a year, you can do the math. Uh, between the hard costs and the soft costs, it can be as much as 30 percent. So we want to bring that number down a little bit, and we, we feel that behavior-based interviewing will do that. So how do you do behavior-based interviewing? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, the first thing we want to do is want to update the job description. Now, I know it sounds kind of passe, and a lot of folks aren't using job descriptions anymore because it's kind of duties as assigned in most organizations, but it is good to have an updated job description, and we recommend clients do that a couple times a year, either during the interview process, the process we're about to go down, the behavior-based interview process, or during the annual employee evaluation. It's always a good time before you evaluate employees, sit them down for their annual evaluation and or salary review, that you update their job description because let's face it, jobs change year to year. So it's a good time to update the job description during that face-to-face -face, uh, year end evaluation of the employee. But it's also a good time to update it before you go down the behavior-based interviewing process. And if you haven't hired somebody in a while for a specific position, it's, it's important that you update that job description, both from the technical skills and the performance skills. So what does that mean? So from the technical skills perspective, um, does this person need to know basic Microsoft Word technology? Do they need to be proficient in Excel? Do they need to be, to be proficient in PowerPoint? I mean, all of us know how to use basic Microsoft Office suite products, but uh, how proficient does this person really need to be, depending on the job? Are there other pieces of technology that they're going to need to know? Is there any coding that this person has to do, even on a day-in and day-out basis? So what are the technical skills required for the job? The other is, what are the performance skills? Does this person work on a team? Does this person need to lead others in the organization? Does this person need to sell? Um, what are those you know, performance skills, people skills that you also need to assess during the interview process? So as I said, it's always, always good to update the job, job description. Obviously, there's always a line on the bottom that says duties as assigned, and we like to keep that in there. But what are the, what are the duties and responsibilities of this individual day in and day out? And why is that important? The reason why that is important because you're going to base your behavior-based interviewing questions on those tasks or performance uh, items in the job description. So the job description becomes the basis for your behavior-based interview questions. So it's very, very important to have that updated job description. Second thing we need to do in the behavior-based interviewing session is you need to set the right environment. So if this person's coming to your office, if I'm coming to your office, what's the environment that you want to put me in? Um, am I something that you're going to run through between meetings? Um, am I in a room that gets trafficked a lot by other employees? 
Um, so making me feel at ease is very, very important in the behavior-based interviewing process. Um, being interviewed is probably one of the more, most stressful things an individual can experience, either getting into the workplace or going from workplace one to workplace two. It's very, very much an anxious moment for the person you're about to interview. So you want to put that person at ease. So welcome them into the office. Have a room put aside for an hour or so so you can conduct this interview. Uh, offer them something to drink, a cup of coffee, glass of water. Make them feel comfortable because you want to have this person be open and honest with you. And by making them a bit more comfortable and having them in a place that uh, is pretty quiet, uh, we'll, we'll do that for you. So setting the stage is, is important. So now you have your, your interview questions all lined up. You have the environment all lined up. So what do these questions really, really look like? So we are on the premise, when you do behavior-based interview, we're on the premise that uh, past actions or behaviors or performance can be the best predictor of future behavior and performance. Normally, if someone has performed a certain way in the past, most likely they will perform the same way in the future. So you want to try to base your uh, behavior-based interview questions around things the individual has done in the past that you're going to be expecting them to do in the future. And that comes, obviously, with the job description. And you want to ask open-ended behavior-based questions. You want to go with the 80-20 rule. You want to make sure that your candidate does most of the talking. Not that you can't interject questions from time to time or ask a follow-up question, but this is their opportunity to share with you and to demonstrate for you and tell you about times they have demonstrated the skills or performance that you are expecting in the workplace. So you want to ask those questions to kind of put them in situations in the past that will tell you about how they will behave or perform in the future. So you want to ask um, open-ended behavior-based questions. So asking somebody to tell me about your strengths or what are your goals are um, doesn't really cut it in that behavior-based interviewing process. So what kind of questions can you ask? Well, let's go through a couple examples here of a standard question versus a, pa a past event question. So as I said earlier, what are your goals? That's really just a standard question, but you can rephrase that question in a performance-based, behavior-based, uh, tell me about a little more about you question. What is your primary goal and what did you do to achieve it last year with your previous organization? So now they're telling you about a goal they had that they've tried to achieve in the past, and more likely they'll try to do the same thing for you in the future. Another open-ended uh, open, uh, uh, behavior-based interview question, give me an example of a time when you were creative. Tell me about the project you worked on and how your creativity enhanced that project. And then give the person some time to give you feedback and the answer to that question. So these are past event questions, and whether they're on the technical skills side or the performance side, you want to ask open-ended behavior-based questions. Tell me about a time that you met with a client and you really assessed their needs well and you provided some type of product or service to satisfy the client need. And they'll go ahead and give you the story about that situation. And more times than not, they'll do the same for you. Then you can ask what we call reverse-ended questions. So um, tell me about a goal that you set in the last year that you didn't achieve, didn't achieve, and how did you feel about that? So put them in a situation where it's just not the positive side of what they did. You know, what type of uh, challenge did you overcome in your last job? Or what happened in your last job that was frustrating to you and how did you overcome that frustration? Or tell me about a time you had a conversation with a team member that didn't go well and how did you handle that? So you try to ask these open-ended behavior-based questions. It's always a good idea to take notes. I maybe should have said that earlier, but it's always a good idea to take notes uh, during your interview. Uh, you may want to tell the candidate in the beginning of the, of, of the interview that just to make sure I get all the information I need to make a, a good decision, I'm going to be taking notes along the way. And again, one of the reasons why we do that is to make sure that when you're interviewing candidate two, three, four, and five, uh, that you can go back and take a look at the answers to those questions from multiple candidates, again, to make a better hiring decision. So again, you just want to keep this kind of uh, open-ended. You want to kind of keep these questions behavior-based, talking about the past so that they can tell you and share with you examples about uh, what's in the future. 
The other thing you need to yeah, be aware of and something that you'll need to teach your managers of is what you can't ask in the interview question. And there's a whole set of legal questions that you are legal issues around asking specific questions that you can't ask. So again, you want to check with your legal counsel, but if you Google on the web, you'll find, and we have information that we can give you about what questions you cannot ask in the interview. So there are a whole series of questions you can't ask. Um, and the obvious one is, are you married? How many kids you have? And those are questions you cannot ask in the interview. What we kind of tell people as a general rule of thumb is you want to ask questions about the job, okay? About the job skills, about the job performance. You want to keep your questions around the job itself. So those are some tips for you about behavior-based interviewing. It's all about preparation. It's all about preparation. Job description, behavior-based questions about the job, asking people about past behavior to predict future behavior. Uh, we do have a couple of tools for you we want to share with you. We actually offer a um, half-a-day training program for our clients on behavior-based interviewing. Uh, it's very, very popular with our clients. We offer it in the classroom. It's a half-day program, three to three and a half hours. Uh, we also offer some programs online. You can take a course online on behavior-based interviewing. Uh, if you go to our website, you'll see one of our books. It's called More Than a Gut Feeling. It also comes with a DVD. Where am I going here? I'm going this way. More Than a Gut Feeling. It's probably the most popular video-based, DVD-based interview training program that's out there. Again, it's a half-day program. As all of our half-day programs, we talk about the behavior. Uh, people see about a 22-minute video about the behavior in action. And then we actually skill practice. When we teach the program, we tell clients to have their managers bring their current job descriptions because we have walk them through, the, um, walk them through the, the process and give them some time to update their job descriptions so they can start building some of these behavior-based interview questions. And as always, we always recommend the Profile XT. You guys have heard that before. Some of you came to the executive briefing. Thank you for that. Uh, we're doing another webinar in the next week or two about the assessment. Again, just trying to get more information uh, to make a good hiring decision. One of the beauties of the PXT Select is that the report generates legal behavior-based interview questions. You can go back and ask the candidate based on where they fall inside or outside the performance model pattern. So again, using that behavior-based interview questions is the way to go. Uh, just a couple more updates for you. We're in the midst of our year-end sale. It started uh, today. Actually, we just kind of did soft, soft open on the weekend, but our year-end sale starts today. A lot of DVDs, assessments, kits, this profiles, other profiles on sale on our website. Uh, check it out at trainingsolutions.com or just give me a shout, 703-318-0838 here in the office, and um, uh, we'll go from there. So uh, our session next Monday, the 27th, will be about what I'm seeing in the classroom. I've been on the road, as you know, for a couple weeks here, um, doing disc training in different parts of the country, and uh, I wanted to give you some updates on what I'm seeing in the classroom, what's working, what's not working, how participants are engaging, uh, what I'm seeing uh, from team leaders as far as their engagement. So uh, that'll be next week, next Monday. Um, Monday's with Michael live here in the Train Solutions Facebook room. So thank you all for coming in today uh, and make it a great day. See you next week.